we traded 30,000 SPX zero DTE trades using AI and robots. Let's show you what worked. My wife and I trade together every single day. She's a former banker and successful house flipping investor. I started and sold two internet companies. I retired at age 42. I'm an attorney. Most importantly, I'm a professional gambler. Our motto on our channel is math makes money. Let me explain how. Over the last year, we had AI backtest 20 million trades a week. Our AI robots executed 30,000 SPX zero DTE trades. Let me show you how we learned that math makes money. Before we get started, I wanted to show you quickly the results that we've achieved. Even in the last 90 days, for every million dollars invested in our funds, we made $218,000 on 7,813 trades, capturing 12.5% of the premium. On our YouTube channel, Robin Maria Trading, some of our viewers asked us that we create a smaller fund to show examples of how they might trade with only six trades a day. On October 1st, we created this account. As you can see, it's up 27% in 75 days, and that's about 108% annual rate of return. Over the next few minutes, we're going to show you how AI identifies high probability trades, how AI robots execute those trades, and how repetition creates an edge. In order to make it easier to understand, we're going to break this up into five short videos. The first one is the setup. For purposes of this presentation, we're just going to go over the MEC trades and the EMA trades. A MEC trade is a multiple entry iron condor. It's going to be entered multiple times a day. That consists of two parts. You're going to have a put credit spread and you're going to have a call credit spread. Both will be entered at the same time and they'll both be entered at the same price. We always sell for credit. So you're going to sell a put credit spread and a call credit spread. You're going to sell the short leg on each one of these spreads for a certain amount of premium, say $2. Then you're going to have to buy the long back, let's say for five cents, and that will give you a net price of $1.95, which is $195 if it goes to expiration. The second trade that we do is the EMA or exponential moving average. This is going to be either a put credit spread or a call credit spread. And what we do is we compare the 20 minute exponential moving average to the 40 minute exponential moving average. And so if the market is going up, we're going to sell a put credit spread. If the market is going down, we'll sell a call credit spread. A little bit about nomenclature. If we sell, say we're doing a 1002 $2 MEC with 150W, 95% stop loss. What that means is 1002 is going to be the East Coast time. Then $2 will be the amount the robot will enter for either the put credit spread or the call credit spread just for the short leg, not for the long leg. <clears throat> and if it's not exactly at $2, what you do is go and nickel down, nickel up, nickel down, nickel up, and try and get as close as you can to $2. 150W stands for the distance 150 wide between the short leg and the long leg. Now, we don't use the long leg as a stop loss. What we use it for is buying power reduction. For every $10 of strike movement, you're going to increase the amount of buying power required by $1,000. So if you have 20 wide, it's going to be $2,000 in buying power for that trade. 100 wide will be $10,000. 150 wide will be $15,000. Pick the biggest buying power that you can afford. We'll show you how to do it on the next slide. What we want you to do is to sell the target premium for the $2, whatever it is on the short leg, and then buy the first long leg that's priced at a nickel or up to the maximum width of your buying power that you can afford. So let's say in this example, you could only afford 100 wide, right? So what you do is you start, you sell that short leg at 68.35, you start going up to 68.30 or down to 68.30, 68.25, whatever, and you find that the first nickel is at 67.95. Even though it's not 100 away, you go ahead and sell that full, first nickel, because that would mean that you'd be using a lot less buying power for this particular trade. So always remember, go to the first nickel or for the maximum buying power that you're willing to pay for. This is the second most difficult slide of this entire presentation. 95% SL refers to 95% stop loss. What you're doing is you're telling your broker, if I lose a certain amount of money. If the market goes against me and I lose a certain amount of money, I want you to put in a market order and close this trade out. And so let's say they use 100% stop loss to make the math easy. And if you buy it, if you sell it for a dollar and you say 100% stop loss, 
that means that if the market goes against you and that it's minus two dollars you have to pay two dollars to buy it back that you go ahead and it triggers a market order and you, because you collected a dollar on the front end you pay two dollars in the back end you have a hundred percent loss just one dollar now you can rest a stop order or a stop loss order either at your robot website or at your broker or at the CBOE electronic book. Remember the way it works is the CBOE electronic book, they break down every second into 10,000 milliparts and then they send the order to the market maker who executes the trade. The way they order those trades is first in time is first in right. Retail uh, sellers go ahead of institutional sellers. Now, your robot website is probably checking once every second if they're really good. Some of them only check once every five minutes. Your broker's checking probably every half second or so. And then the CBOE, you're actually in the electronic book. Also, so you need to be sure that you've got it on the CBOE. In order to do that, you have to be a single leg stop loss. You cannot be doing it by the entire put credit spread. So you can't be selling the long and the short. You can only be selling the, you can only be selling, or excuse me, you can only be buying back the short. You need to make sure that you talk to your broker and you find out if I'm doing a single leg stop market order, stop loss order at market, is that resting at the book or is that resting at the broker? Because some brokers like IBKR, they first try and put uh, uh, customers against each other so they can avoid going through the exchange. That slows down because they got to check if there's nobody there, then they send it to the CBOE. Now you're way past down the line and time has passed. And you think milliseconds make, don't make a difference. They do make a huge difference. That's called slippage. So if you put in an order for 100% stop loss and it's got to go from the robot company, say to the broker, or the broker tries to put it against each people or the broker just holds it there and then gives it off to the CBOE, those take milliseconds. And that time, that market what, that was at 100% loss to you has moved to 110, 120% by the time that order co comes to the CBOE. By the time they fill it, you're paying 120, 125% rather than 100%. That's called slippage. That's why I tell people, commissions are pennies. Don't worry about the commissions to the broker. The commissions are penny. The slippages are dollars. Find out exactly how your broker is doing it. We analyze every broker we use for slippage every single month, and we talk to them about the slippage because we want to really be sure we're minimizing the slippage. Okay. Red alert, this is the most difficult slide of this entire presentation. We're gonna talk about putting the, the stop loss on the short leg only and calculating what the stop loss means. And the formula is, if you have a 95% stop loss, the formula would be 95% times the premium received on the short leg only, plus the premium received on the short leg only would issue the stop loss amount. Oh, oh my gosh, Rob, give me some examples. Look at the slide. What do you know? We got some examples. So if the premium is $2 and you have a 95% stop loss, then <clears throat> that you're going to have 95% of $2. That's $1.90. Plus you got $2 in premium when you sold it. So $2 plus $1.90 is $3.90. That's your stop loss, $3.90. If the premium is $3 and you have 150% stop loss, well, then you're going to take 150% of $3. That's $4.50. You're going to add in the premium you got originally. That's $3. So your stop loss is $7.50. Let's take another example. If the premium is $1.50 and you have a 200% stop loss, then 200% of $1.50 is $3 plus the original $1.50 you got is $4.50. Okay. Now, the other thing, just to make it even more complicated, is that's selling the short. Now, you've still got these longs. you got to sell the longs. A lot of people say, oh, just don't. Hold the longs for a lottery ticket. No, this is this is going to close out today. It's going to be worthless at the end of the day on these longs. So if you can get a nickel or 10 cents when your short gets punched out, then that's a great advantage. And people say, oh, it's only $5 or $10. Yeah, but if you're doing it, say, three or four times a day, 10 times a day, and you're doing it 250 uh, days a year, it adds up to a lot of money. How can you automate the selling of the long leg? Well, you can do what's called an OTO order. That's one triggers the other. So let's say we've got a stop loss order on our short and that's going to our broker and we're telling them to send it to the CBOE. Now we tell the broker we want an OTO, one triggers the other order on my long. 
whenever this short is actually closed out by the CBOE, then we want you to sell the long at the market. And that way it will automatically be done. You don't have to keep running in from the beach in order to sell your longs like I used to have to do. Again, though, you have to make sure that your broker will do OTOs on those long legs on SPX. There is some buying power issues and there is some calculations for some brokers. So you do want to make sure that they do OTO orders, OTO orders on the longs. Before we go on this slide, just remember in that last slide, if it was confusing for you, just go back, watch it again, take a screenshot. You know, the great thing about YouTube is you can go back and go over and over and over again. Okay, so now let's talk about the EMA and how that's different from the MEC. Remember in the MEC, we sold a put credit spread and we sold a call credit spread. In the EMA, we're only gonna sell either a put credit spread or a call credit spread. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna compare the 20 minute exponential moving average to the 40 minute exponential moving average. And so if the market is moving up, we're gonna sell a put credit spread. If the market is moving down, we're gonna sell a call credit spread. This is great when the market is moving. We also think that it's highly unlikely that a market will go in one direction and turn around and come all the way back and down enough in order to punch you out. That's what makes the EMA so effective. Remember the EMA doesn't predict price. All it does is confirm direction at a specific moment in time. So it's not uncommon to have markets going in an M&M &M style and you're doing EMAs that are going up and EMAs are going down all at the same time, but you are so wide out on those that you can still make money on both of them in the same day. Just like on the MEX, when you're doing the EMAs, remember you're gonna go for that target price that we told you, say $2, you're gonna get the closest one to $2, and then you're gonna go out and you're gonna start looking for the long leg, you're gonna take the first nickel, but you're gonna stop if you get out to your limitation of your 150 wide or 50 wide or whatever it might be. That's the end of part one of five. If any of this free information is of any value to you, we'd sure appreciate it if you hit the subscribe and the like button. Go on to the next chapter and you're going to see all the different ways that we put these trades on. Okay, last slide, we're going to say bye-bye. If any of this free information has been of any value to you, we'd really appreciate it if you could go on to our uh, YouTube channel, Rob and Maria Trading. And if you could subscribe and hit like to any of the videos you've seen, we'd really appreciate it. On that channel, we do tell you a great detail how we trade SPX. We go a lot of stock trades. My wife, Maria, she does a, a lot of trades in both options and stocks, earnings trades especially. Um, and she's very, very successful doing that, more successful than me, actually. And then Tyler, my son, he's 30 years old. He started his fund uh, three or four months ago. He's up 10% every single month. He does primarily the wheel strategy, and he does a lot of day trading scalps on the NQs, and he can show you how he does that. At any rate, we have a lot of fun on our channel, but it is very serious. Everything we do is based on math. Remember, trade with your heart, trade with your head, not with your heart. Trade small, trade often, and math makes money. You have a great trading day.